what who's watching porn in the house welcome back guys this is modo tech one of the reasons web3 became so popular is because it focuses on privacy web3 empowers the society by giving control back to the users today we're not going to discuss a web3 project instead we are talking about privacy as some of you guys may know when you're visiting a website from your home computer or your phone first thing you have to do is typing a website address for example google.com but the network devices will not understand what google.com means instead it uses something called ip address to find where it needs to go and this is where dns servers come in without going in depth a dns server is a server you may visit when your device doesn't know what IP address a specific URL may be mapped to. Some of the most popular free and public DNS servers are 1.1.1.1 that belongs to Cloudflare. And then we have the popular 8.8.8.8 .8 or 8.8.4.4. .4, and those belong to Google. And most of the time, if you use a router that's provided by your internet provider without doing configurations yourself, you may end up using your internet provider's DNS server. As a result, they will see all the website you visit. And if you don't care about that, you can probably stop the video right here. However, if you do care about your privacy, we are going to set up a Raspberry Pi Pi hole server at home. It can be used as a DNS server, DNS recursive server, and also even a DHCP. However, for today's video, we're just gonna focus on a DNS sinkhole and a recursive server. If you're new to the channel, I am Modotech. My channel is focused on Web3 and also cybersecurity. If you're interested, please subscribe and like my videos. So all you really need is a Raspberry Pi. You can do this on Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm doing this on the Raspberry Pi 4, and this is actually from my uh, pre-search project, some of you guys may know. I took it off because I run my pre-search nodes on Flux now, and now I'm just using the same device. I'm repurposing it as a Pi-hole DNS server. One feature I forgot to mention, with Pi-hole, you can also block ads. You can even specify what website or what ads you want to block. So I do have my device in a fancy case here. Personally, I think it's cool, however, there's a problem with this case, and that is because of this power button right here. It is a really extra button because normally when your Pi goes offline, let's say your power's out, and when the power's back, it just restarts itself. However, when a power button is there, it doesn't auto start itself. You have to go back and press it for it to start. So we are gonna be using a 128 gigabytes of SD card, which is gonna be more than enough. We are also going to keep a certain amount of logs natively and i don't really imagine that you have that many devices at home so 128 gigabytes should be enough later on i will also show you a better way to manage your logs so first thing first we need to make sure that the raspberry pi is running a ubuntu server or raspbian image this is a raspberry pi's website it's actually called raspberry pi os now it's no longer called the raspbian since i'm using a windows we're going to download the windows installer and we're going to go ahead and open up so it gives you the option to choose what version of the Raspberry Pi you want to run. If you don't know what Raspberry Pi version you have, you can go ahead and install the 32-bit. However, in my case, I know it's a 64-bit. I'm going to install a Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. Going to choose a storage. This is the SD card. I plugged it in with an adapter. And before we click right, make sure to go ahead and hit this gear button, go to settings. You can set up your host name and make sure to enable SSH. You can choose to use public key authentication or you can use password authentication. For this video, we're just gonna use password authentication. You can choose to configure wireless LAN right now and it will ask you for the wireless ID and also the password. For me, I'm going to be plugging directly into the router, so I won't be configuring the wireless LAN. And go ahead and save. Once you've saved that, go ahead and write. It will tell you it's gonna wipe everything on your SD card. And this process may take a little bit. Since you're waiting, I wanna mention that if you're using a Mac, once we're doing our SSH, you can just use your Mac terminal. And if you're using a Linux, I don't think I need to tell you how to SSH. If you're using a Windows 10 or Windows 11, most likely you will be able to use PowerShell to run SSH directly. However, you can also go to PuTTY, and this is one of my favorite SSH tools. In fact, it does more than just SSH. I'll have these links in the description below. Also, if you're like me, you have a bunch of IoT devices hooked up at home, you got a bunch of Web3 nodes, 
bunch of different crypto nodes. With the Pi hole, you will also be able to see if some of these devices are communicating to malicious address or just whatever address you don't want it to communicate to. And this is also why from a security point of view, it's better to run your DNS server. Okay, when it's done, it will tell you this image has been written to this mass storage and you can remove the SD card from the reader. Go ahead and click continue and now remove the SD card. So the next thing we need to do is put this SD card back in the Raspberry Pi and then grab the power and power it up. For me, I'm gonna be powered up next to my router and I'm hooking up my Raspberry Pi directly to my router. So you will have to go to your router to find out what your IP address of your Raspberry Pi is. Each router is different. Sometimes your router just may pop it up as a Raspberry Pi. If you have installed Ubuntu on this Pi and on the same router, it may remember it as a Ubuntu device. Since the result can vary, I will not be demonstrating this part. For myself, the server is 192.168.1.197. Logging with the username and password you set up during the installation process of your Pi. Once you're logged in, go ahead and go to Pi-Hole's website and click on install Pi-Hole. It is very simple. All you got to do is copy this curl command and then run this command in your Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and hit OK. And you can use your left and right key to choose different options. Go ahead and hit a continue. It's strongly recommended to set up a static IP for your Pi hole. Click OK. So this step, we're selecting a upstream DNS server. That's because the Pi hole itself will still have to know where to ask for DNS information in the beginning. And that is why the very first query, it may take a little bit of time, but after that, when you're visiting website or playing games, you should have better performance because you have a local DNS server. And this is a third party list to block ads. And that's one of the main reasons people are using Pi hole. So in this case, we'll just say yes. And we do want to install an admin web interface and that will help us visualize everything that's going on. We say yes again. Would you like to enable query logging? I would like to see my logs. And later on, I will also show you how to port this log to another management system. And I do want to show everything because this is just for myself. So once you finish install, it will show you your admin username, which is admin, and your password is this randomly generated password. Obviously, this is very difficult to remember. So I will show you the next command. Make sure to change this password. Go ahead and hit OK. As we can see on the screen, it says use pihole-a-p to change your password. And it will ask you to enter a new password. Next thing you want to do is log into the web user interface of this Pi hole. Just type in the IP address of your Pi hole in your browser and hit enter. Actually, you need to do slash admin. Once you have logged in, you will see this is a really nice graphical interface. Let me zoom in just a little bit. So on the top left, it will show you the status of your Raspberry Pi. Right now, there is a zero query when we go to query log it's going to be completely empty. And this is where we have to go back to our router and set up our DNS address. To set up DNS on your router, each router is going to be different. For my router, I actually had to Google it to see where to change it. Currently, it is set up to use Cloudflare's DNS. I, however, would like to use our Raspberry Pi. So it would be 192.168.1.197. And just in case it fails, we're still going to leave a secondary DNS but ideally you don't want a secondary. So we're gonna click apply. Okay, now going back to the Pi hole interface, we can see that now we have two active clients. One is the local host Raspberry Pi itself, and then we have the router itself. So if you have another router where you can specify which port, which LAN you're going to use this DNS, Pi hole DNS, you will actually be able to see all the devices that's using this Pi hole DNS. But right now, since we choose the WAN port, it's going to show everything under uh, this basically gateway address. We already have 27 total queries. And then we can see that all these websites it is trying to visit. And if you don't like any of this, you can go ahead and just click blacklist. All right, guys. So now we can see all the DNS logs, all our DNS requests on this network is going to our Pi hole. However, we're still going to install a recursive server on this Pi hole so we can keep a copy of DNS record locally. So now from the documentation of Pi hole, we're gonna go down to guides and then we're gonna click on DNS. 
and then we will see this unbound. With unbound, you will make sure that you don't forward all your DNS requests to third party like Google. We will have to do some command line again. We're going to copy this line, paste, make sure to choose yes. Uh, then we're going to use a text editor to open up this config file on PyHole. And we are going to copy this entire thing. Just click on copy and then right click in your putty. It should just paste. Now hit control X. It will ask you to save modified buffer and say yes and hit enter to confirm the name of the file. Now we can test the unbound server using this command. Copy, paste. That was actually pretty fast and it says there's no error. And then we'll test the DNSSEC validation using this command. Copy and paste. So it is normal. The first command should give a server fail. The second one should give a no error. Next thing we want to do is finally configure the PyHole to use itself as a recursive DNS server. So we're going back to the PyHole graphical interface and we're going down to settings and we can see DNS tab. We'll choose upstream DNS server custom one. And we're going to paste this local address port 5335. And now make sure you scroll all the way down and click save. All right, just one more time, let's make sure our DNS is actually working. Uh, so this device is in the same network with that main router. So we're just gonna go look up any website and click to it and it seems like it works just fine. And then coming back to the query log, we can see that we just visit the offsec.com website. All right, guys, I don't want to overwhelm you with additional information. And this will be it for this video. In the future, we'll explore some additional features and also we'll look at some other logs and even porting all these logs to a centralized location for you to gain an overall situation of your home network. Again, if you like the content, please subscribe and like this video. This is Moto Tech. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.